Hello, and in this video, I'm going to run through the materials that I used. So we'll run the intro and I'll, I'll show you the materials. Okay, first of all, the pencils I use, uh, these four are Caran d'Ache Graph Wood. Um, we've got a 9B, a 2B, an H and a 4H. The odd one out is the Cratacolor 9H. I also have blending stump, a dart, a graphite block, a putty rubber, a normal eraser, and also as well some cotton wool and uh, I'll, I'll basically go what, uh, through what I use that for so if we start with the pencils so the first pencil I go through is my H pencil and basically I use this to do my initial drawings uh, it's nice and blunt which means it won't scratch the surface of the paper and when I use it, I'll generally hold it about here. So then uh, I, I'm not putting as much pressure through it as I would if I was holding it near the tip down here. So basically anything I do with this, it can very, very easily with a putty rubber just be erased. Next pencil I use, 2B pencil. Again, I tend to use it pretty blunt. And if I just put a bit of tone on there like that, you can see the tone that it lays down. And then I've got a 9B, which generally speaking, I use at the end of a picture just to give it the last piece of contrast. You can get the 2B a lot darker than that just by applying layers over the top of it. And then it will build up a strong depth of tone. And then I'll just apply the 9B over the top just to give it the last little bit of contrast. 4H, now this one is used sharp. And basically what I'll do is I'll use this for fine detail if I want to just do some fur on the edge of an animal or for example just like that but again I can work it through another tone if I want a darker tone nine H mainly an engraving tool so you can engrave texture into the paper and it does have just a slight tone to it but again if I run this through another tone you can see it will take it and just basically just pull that tone and drag it out so if you want to do a fine line and you want a dark line it's a great pencil to use for that just by running it through another tone and again that just is U sharp uh, about 17 years old this pencil and just to, to show you something the basically the uh, new ones are red whereas this old one is is yellow this is a Cressa color I found it's the best 9H for me to use you do tend to find with 9H pencils that uh, the leads break whereas I haven't ever had that happen with this one uh, hence why it's so old and you can see all the paint's worn off of it as well. Blending stump. Now, basically this is used for shading 
or you can blend a tone out. And it's great for just building up a picture, just to give it some shape. But again, with a putty rubber, it can quite easily be erased. So you don't have to worry about anything with that. Now this one again is very old, it's well over 10 years old, and it's held together with tape. Basically these are rolled up paper, and as you can see from that new one, um, basically there is a seam which runs along here, and after a few years they do tend to come un, uh, unstuck and unravel, so that's why this one is held together with tape. Also as well it was pointed to start with, and you can see from the difference as it's worn over the years but it's become so ingrained with graphite through years of use that it just works beautifully for what I want to use it for. Uh, this was quite a thin one. Um, they do come in different, uh, different thicknesses. Graphite block. Now this basically is this 9B pencil, but in a solid block. So this is a graph wood pencil and these are called graph cubes. Now it's designed to be used on the edge like that and used loosely, whereas the way I use it is basically just like a big pencil. So I just use the end and for doing black backgrounds, I just literally can just block the tone in like that with it. And that's how I build up a black background on a picture. To stop your hands from getting dirty, you can actually wrap these in sellotape like that which works uh, very well to do that um, this one's actually wrapped with sellotape for another reason that's because I dropped it and uh, it is broken but I managed to tape it back together but again that is well over 10 years old again now we come to erasers now this is a normal eraser um, and it's also got a pen eraser on the other end. I only really use this for cleaning up uh, major marks uh, and to use it I make sure that it's clean because with these types of erasers you can actually end up putting more of a mark down than actually take one away. So you, you can have that happen as you can see just there. So if you're going to use one of these make sure it is clean. And then the pen eraser is great for really gouging stuff out if you've made a major mistake. But the main one I use is the putty rubber. The putty rubber is really good. This one is a Caran Dash. It started its life grey. And basically you can roll points onto these. Like that for doing detail. And picking out highlights. Or you can roll uh, a point and squash it and make it into a blade. And basically then you can use it to brush tone away. So if you've put some tone on the paper. Say like that. You can use it like a brush. And each pass will basically just take a, a layer away at a time. And I find that's great as I go through a picture. I can use a combination of that and the point to just pick out highlights just as I go through the picture. Also as well, that 9B that I put down there, if I roll a point and press down into it, you can see it will pull that tone away. But because it's sticky, it sticks to the end of the eraser. So you have to squash it around just to clean it back up and again you can do the same thing and you can see it will pull a lot of tone out. Generally speaking these last me about three years. Now like I said this is a Caran Dash. I've used three different ones. Factis, Maphead and obviously the Caran Dash one. The Caran Dash is quite difficult to get hold of. So um, one of the other two are generally quite easy to get hold of. Uh, I've got to say those three I know definitely work. Putty rubbers vary considerably, probably more than any other material from one, one manufacturer and one type to another. 
Hence why you have white ones, blue ones, grey ones, they all work different. But those ones I know definitely work. That's how they start new. And then basically you have to squash them around and then they will go like that. And like I said, this will, this will last me about three years. You basically clean it like this that will disperse the graphite within it and the way you know that it's uh, it's at the end of its life is it will have a gritty feel to it and as a consequence that's the good time to then change it the dart now the dart is actually a dart it's just been reshaped on the end just with a file and basically just like that and it will reshape it and then you end up with a tool which is ideal for engraving into the paper to give the effect of say fur skin um, you can create the effect of wood rock any texture basically that you can think of you can create it with stuff like this now this is a cheap dart and the thing is, is where it's cheap, the metal is not as good and it will file quite easily. Whereas if you have an expensive one, you'll probably find it will be difficult to reshape the tip. Now, the more you use it, the better it gets because the paper will slowly polish it. And again, it's realistically, it's a tool you only ever um, buy once because if you look after it, it should last a lifetime. Quite an easy life for a dart, just running it over paper. And the way it works, if I just do a little bit of texture onto here. So this engraves into the paper like that. And you use it in combination with the pencils. So basically what I'm going to do now is use the um, 2B pencil. If I can remember where I did it, there it is. And as I run the pencil over the top, you can see it gives the effect of a basic fur texture to it. I wouldn't normally use a 9B over the top, but this will exaggerate the, the effect. So ideal tool, you can buy embossing tools to do this. They're pretty flimsy. I've got to say this, this is uh, going to last forever. So cotton wool or basically makeup pads, and then you peel them in half. Now, with these, they're great for doing the background on a picture if you have a, a gray background or something a bit more moody. Um, also for creating the effect of dust if an animal's running along or something. Uh, and again, if you look after it, it'll last ages and ages. Uh, I lost the best bit I had, which was jet black, but that's probably about the next, next best one to it. As you can see, it just puts a bit of, bit of tone onto the paper. And again, the more you use it, the more the tone builds up. Now, when the cotton wool is new, basically you need to break it in. So what you do is you take a 2B pencil and on a piece of scrap paper, you just brush a bit of tone over it like that. Don't have to press too hard. It's just to literally put some tone on the surface. Get a good amount on it. And then basically with new bit you can start to work it into it 
takes a little bit of time to get one really fully bedded in. And this applies as well for the blender as well. When you have a new blender, again, same thing. Okay, and again. And then just apply the tone down onto the paper. Now, these take a little bit of time, like I said, to break in. Um, so it's not something you want to just throw away. Keep it in a bag or something uh, and just hold on to it. And the more you use it, the better it will get. Okay. So only other thing to go through really are another two things which work with each other. And that is pencil sharpener and a file. This pencil sharpener, again, is over 10 years old, I think. And it's never had the blades replaced. It's just a normal one. And most of my pencils I use blunt. So the thing is, it doesn't really matter. So what I will do with, for example, the 4H or the 9H, then what I will do is I do want those sharp. So I will sharpen them in the pencil sharpener. They won't really get a point on them as such. And all I literally do then is just finish it with a file just by running the pencil up and down it and just twist it as I go. And that just finishes the tip, puts a very, very sharp point on it. In fact, it's too sharp generally to start with. You have to use them on a piece of scrap just to just take the edge off of it just slightly. Okay, but that's basically the materials that I use. Of course, one thing I did forget to mention was the paper that I'm using. I'm using St. Cuthbert's Saunders Waterford 300 gram hot press. And the tone I'm using is the normal white. It's got a slight creamy look to it. They also do an ultra white, but the ultra white I find for me is just too harsh. It's a brilliant white. Now, I use 300 gram because anything thinner than that uh, can tend to tear up with using the dart on it. Anything that's thicker, heavier, basically it does not seem to take the engraving as well. So that's why I stick with the 300 gram. Also as well, one thing I will point out is that I'm not sponsored by any of these companies whose products I've mentioned. They're just what I've learned to use over the years and what I personally like. End of the day with materials, it's just purely personal choice. It's whatever you find works best for you. I've put some links in the description down below for the materials that I use. Uh, if you found this video useful then uh, and you want to see more, then basically please uh, click like, subscribe. And if you want to be informed of when another video is uploaded, then just click the bell icon. Um, otherwise, uh, Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.